Good morning and welcome to Morning Matters. This morning we are broadcasting from Argentina. Good morning to you, Drew. How are you? Good morning, Rhonda. I am doing well, adjusting to the climate here. You know, this is like a hundred year heat wave coming through and you are experiencing it right here in Argentina. Funny enough, I don't see it any different from home. It's supposed to be a hundred degrees today. I don't know what they measure on. I don't know. <laughs> it seems to be a dry heat though it's not so thick like yeah. it is in uh, Belize. Yeah, but it's nice. I am, I'm loving it. I mean, I'd prefer it to the cold any day. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So how has your Let stay me, been so far? Okay, oh, it's on. been well. It's been well. What's been your best experience so far? Well, you know, <laughs> it's been trialing. <laughs> it's been really trialing. What advice would you have for someone from Belize coming to Argentina? Make sure that the visa you have is the, is, is the visa they require. I mean, gosh, I had a little visa trouble when I got here. I got all the way to Argentina. Um, and I was sent back to America. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I went online. I bought what I thought was a visa to come to Argentina um, because there's no consulate in Belize. I couldn't go and ask anywhere else. And I paid 300 US dollars for it. I thought that was the visa. When I checked in at American Airlines in Belize, they said it was okay. When I left Miami, they said it was okay. When I got here, the woman said to me, she didn't even, this is the only time she gave me eye contact when she says, you can't enter. After that, she never raised her head up again to talk to me. Yep. And then she sent me home. Well, she sent you to Miami. She sent me to Miami and she said, um, I don't care where you go, but you can't stay here. <laughs> Yeah, but when so I so you had to bust your butt the next day and get your visa done. Not only bust my butt, you know what it is being in and Miami. And that was the day after Christmas. Or yeah. no, it was two days after Christmas. That was Friday. That was Friday. And Friday we had to um, the off, the embassy opened at nine o'clock, and they closed at one o'clock that day. So in that time, I had to fill out all the requirements. I had to walk. It felt like miles to go and get all the things that I needed printed and picture taken. But guess what? The guy there treated me well. He stamped my visa the same day and I was back on the plane the same evening. <laughs> so you got a lot of miles racked up. I say God is good, <laughs> right? But That's good. It, it, was, it was worth it. I don't think that I would have made it here any Did other way. Did you shed any tears? I cried like my mother died. <laughs> <laughs> because it was, it was, it's kind of sad to make, I mean, the, the flight here from Miami is, is not short. It's between eight and nine hours, depending on how it works out. And it was just miserable. But guess what? That is behind us now. And I'm here and it's beautiful. And you met a new friend on the way? I you met get, a new you, friend. Your, your deportee mate? Boy, I, I don't, you know, I deporting, I have a new respect for being deported now. <laughs> you know, um... At least they didn't say you can't come back. They say go get the right visa because I showed interest in... I mean, it's not like I was trying to come without any visa. I had what I thought was a visa. Right. And what obviously the airlines thought was an acceptable entry for me to get in here as well. Because you know they help you to make sure that you have all the things you need before they send you off. And I had what I thought was right. Yeah, well, I guess some research would have helped. Well, I thought I did the best I could with what I had. Why are you laughing? Anyway, we are in a park right in, I don't know, this is downtown Buenos Aires. Just across a couple streets there is the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, the park is beautiful. It has these great big trees. And I don't think the biggest one is in the shot, but maybe we'll get it in. But the base of the tree is probably, uh, what, 20 feet in diameter? Pretty much. I mean, it's, it's huge. It's huge. And it's its shady. branches go out, you know, three times that. It's huge. A lot of big trees here. What has been your greatest experience so far? Uh, having to say goodbye to you at the <laughs> airport, not knowing if I'd ever see you again. Well, you know you would have seen me when you got back to Belize, but for two weeks or so, you don't know that you would have seen me. Well, you didn't even shed a tear. What's the deal with that? <laughs> you looked happy. I wasn't happy. I had a mission. You looked all happy and excited. Yeah, it was strange. We did catch my son on the outside. He got all through, got his bags, and there's a little window there that I could talk with him. I caught him. He came in on a different flight. 
And I did catch him on the way out to let him know what was up. And uh, since that, it was it was a nice time. They got some double decker buses without a top on the top part. That's pretty cool. We hope to be getting on that. Maybe we could do a show from the top of the bus there. Well, we'll try and show you as much of that would be interesting. Buenos Aires as oh, possible. Oh, we could maybe we can work something out there. I think. Definitely. All right, ready for some matters? We are ready. For the next few days, I will encourage you to uh, email your matters to us at morningmatters at gmail.com. Please email them to us. Um, it's the most efficient way for us to get your, uh, get your matters. You can text them to the number on the screen, um, but we haven't quite figured out the phone situation here yet. So. Oh, we have a number. I'm not sure if how it works. What it takes to get te Oh, my text isn't working yet. So yeah, so for the next few days, please email your matters to us. As soon as you're able to text again, I will put up the number that you can text to. All right, let's get into some matters. How was your Christmas, Drew? Uh, it's like I didn't have one. We it's left Christmas Day, flew to Miami, spent five hours in Miami, got on a plane and woke up in Argentina. And then you turned around and went back to Miami. I saw all the movies there are to be seen on the plane. <laughs> I've eaten all the meals because I've been on it four times. I've been to Argentina one time more than you, sir. You have. That is true. <laughs> Although I've been here a longer amount of time. That doesn't really count. Um, but American did make some accommodation for oh, you. Yeah. They upgraded your seat on the, on the deportation. When they sent me back, yeah, they gave me business class as opposed to coach. Yeah. I had more leg room. I had a little bit more luxury. Was the food the same? The food was the same. You know, I didn't enjoy the food going back. I was too depressed to eat the food. I would be too. But I had another plan in, in mind. So, I mean, if I didn't make it here, I'd make it somewhere. And that is why I always say it doesn't matter what happens. It's what you do next that is important. There you Sometimes go. in life things yeah, happen. Yeah, if everybody was wondering what she was talking about on Facebook... That it's was this, it. Yeah, things happen that you have no control over. First she cried and threw a fit. Yes. <laughs> and then I composed myself and figured out I got to give it my best shot. My best shot was to go back and try and get my visa. And the, when, the, when I got there, the guy said, well, I'm not sure if I can give it to you now. And then he said, um, go and get these things. And so I left my passport with him immediately because, and he says, do you want it? I said, I don't want my passport. I need my visa. When I got back, he gave it to me. Excellent. Life is good again. Let's get into some matters. Let's do it. It says I have a girlfriend and we share two children together. We've been together for 22 years. I ask her to marry me and she turns me down. She thought I was joking. And now we live like we're brothers and sisters in a relationship. And I am not happy with that. Oh, wow. That's unfortunate. I mean, you've lived with her for 22 years. There is some level of comfort that comes in 22 years. There's some level of, you know, um, I like comfort is what I, is the only word I can think of that would come in that time. And in that time, you, you say a lot, you do a lot, but you have to be building on your relationship. You have to ask her why she refused to marry you. A lot of women have just the opposite um, experience. The man doesn't want to marry them. Obviously, you want to marry this yeah. woman and she refused after 22 years. I would ask her, what is her intention for the relationship? Yeah, I, if marriage is important to you, I think you got to find out what she intends uh, in the near future. And I, why? Normally, I would say long term, but it's already been long term. Yeah. So now it's short term. Got to figure it out. And tell her you are not happy. Not only tell her you're not happy, ask her for what you want. Telling her well, you're not he happy. No, but I mean, again, telling somebody you're not happy is not enough. Ask from them what you desire. But did you give her a ring? True. Maybe that's why she thought you were joking. Yeah. Because maybe it was just your mouth moving. Next, next time you have a ring, you have everything planned out, you make a big production about it. That, so she knows you're serious. There you go. There you go. I am married for over 40 years. Two witnesses, four friends present. We are still together till death do us part. What am I saying is a big wedding doesn't make sense if you can't afford it. It's That's the life true. that you live after. That is so true. 
And I think, I don't know about in Belize, but in the States, a lot of people, they go through this big wedding and, it, you know, it's a lot of stress and all this stuff involved. Like but, that. um... Go on. Anyway, there's a lot of these people around. There's a lot of stress involved with getting the wedding plans together and everybody's stressed. And then you go on this two-week honeymoon or a week honeymoon. You come back, you got all this debt and stuff to take care of when you get back. And so the marriage starts out pressure. under a lot of pressure. Yeah. I think keep it small. I would encourage you even just take the money, run off, get married. And then when you come back, have a party. I think that makes sense. That's... I mean, because you're not trying to impress your friends. That should be a day for you and your spouse. I can see a lot of times the mother and the father want a big ceremony to show... Their friends that give their Give away children, their daughter, yeah. give away their son, whatever. But, you it, know, I don't sometimes think it's I think it. that's overrated. But I think that you only realize that the older you get. I think when you are, a lot of people, when they're young, they want that big party. They yeah. want that big get-together. They want that big celebration. But like the woman said, if you can't afford it, then don't bother with it. I'm 21, my girl, we are engaged, we together for three years, but I still, oh, I still sexting with other girls, but I love my girls. How can you help me? Oh, wow. I would think it's just a discipline problem. We can't make you stop something that you know want to stop. If you want to stop it, then put down the phone or put but down the sexting item. the first item. step is realizing that it's wrong. It's like an alcoholic. He knows it's wrong. Until he admits he's an alcoholic, he's not going to get any help. He knows it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you need therapy. Professional help. Maybe you need to stop your fool and get it together. Maybe you get rid of your phone. Or your laptop. Or your iPad. Because you can't sex without those things. It's true. You ever had that problem? No. <laughs> I can quit any time. <laughs> what a way. Hey, I have a problem or a question. Why is it that all my girlfriends leave me? Mm hmm. You know, a relationship that doesn't make it, don't look at it as necessarily a failure. It's only a failure if you don't learn from it. And I would suggest you go back to those girls and find out what it is that they disliked or what the problem of the relationship was. I and then it's up to you to think, well, okay, I'll work on that or that's not true. And I don't just try to improve it. it in the next relationship. I think if you break up from, when you break up, you as a person should do some self-examining. Absolutely. And you don't necessarily have to go back to them to ask because common sense should be present. And if you examine yourself... Some people are thick. They yes. need it told to them. Well, they can't be... Well, they shouldn't be that thick that after two, three relationships, they don't get it. There is one constant in it, and it's you. And if you take some quiet time to examine yourself, you will figure out why it, why it is that these things didn't work out. I mean, the best of us have flaws. You know, and some of those things are just overbearing. It could be you're picking the wrong ones. Good point. A very good point. If you continue to pick from the same type, you will end up most of the time with the same kind of results. For sure. Right? And it might, it might be you, but it might be that your standards and their standards are, are completely different. It might be that you have standards and they have none. It might be that they have standards and you have none. There you go. Choose a different bot. My man says that he will leave me because I have two girls for him. He doesn't want to go. We live together for 10 years now. He says he would leave you, but the only reason he's not leaving you is because of his children. Uh. I see a little therapy might work for you guys. A little bit of counseling might be able to strengthen your relationship because there is some form of commitment still in that. Well, me, if they were only there for the children and wasn't there for me as well, I would end it myself. Good point. Very good point. Don't leave it up to him. If he says he'd leave, then send him home. 
or send them out. Being on this side of the equator really helps your thinking. Well, is, is, does your brain start spinning the other way? <laughs> you know, I, I, it helps your thinking completely. I don't know that it helps mine, but it helps yours. You've said two genius things since morning, so um, you're on the ball today. Oh, yippee. So, but true, that's a good point. I mean, if he says that he's not there for you, then say, babe, look, I, you have complete access to your girls. I will never speak ill about you to your girls, but if There's it's not There's no working, sense of you two being together. That way he's keeping you away from your truest future. And your girls need to see what a real relationship is like. And I mean, that's going to be their model for when they grow up. Good point. This is Morning Matters. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll be coming back with more from Buenos Aires. All right. With the high cost of fuel these days, every fill-up can be a curiously scary experience. Rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back. That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt or even worse. When you think of the largest selection of sporting goods, you must think of Midway Limited. Musical instruments, Midway Limited. The largest selection of guitar strings, Midway Limited. At Midway Limited, you get high quality soccer boots, footballs, basketballs, billiards, mixing boards, guitars, violins, drums, tennis rackets, fishing poles, and a wide assortment of electronics. Midway Limited is the authorized dealers for Martin & Company, JBL Speakers, and Roland Instruments in Belize. Midway Limited, it's your one-stop shop for electrical, musical, and sporting equipment. Visit Midway Limited on Center Road in Spanish Lookout or give us a call at 823-0095. Whether it's your life you're trying to sweeten or someone else's, make it Moho Chocolate. At Moho Chocolate, we produce the finest quality chocolate. All the cocoa used by Moho Chocolate is sourced from over 120 farmers from southern Belize. We produce chocolate bars, chocolate truffles, mini chocolate squares in several flavors, and organic cocoa powder. We also have gift baskets. The next time you eat chocolate, make sure it's Moho Chocolate. Visit us at any of our three locations in Tourism Village in Belize City, in San Pedro, or in the Departure Lounge at the International Airport. When you think chocolate, think Moho Chocolate. and easy baking? Try Grace Baking Powder. It comes in a convenient 10 gram packet. Grace Baking Powder. Great for my pancakes, waffles, fry jack, flour tortillas, muffins, waffles. Wow! How quick and easy. Grace Baking Powder. So convenient, easy to store, you love it. 
It's good enough and fresh whenever you need it. Another fine product brought to you by Grace. For recipes, go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace, bringing good taste to life. With the high cost of fuel these days, every fill-up can be a curiously scary experience. Rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back. That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt, or even worse. When you think of the largest selection of sporting goods, you must think of Midway Limited. Musical instruments, Midway Limited. The largest selection of guitar strings, Midway Limited. At Midway Limited, you get high quality soccer boots, footballs, basketballs, billiards, mixing boards, guitars, violins, drums, tennis rackets, fishing poles, and a wide assortment of electronics. Midway Limited is the authorized dealers for Martin & Company, JBL Speakers, and Roland Instruments in Belize. Midway Limited, it's your one-stop shop for electrical, musical, and sporting equipment. Visit Midway Limited on Center Road in Spanish Lookout or give us a call at 823-0095. Looking for quick and easy baking? Try Grace Baking Powder. It comes in a convenient 10 gram packet. Grace Baking Powder. Great for my pancakes, waffles, fry jack, flour tortillas, muffins, waffles. Wow! How quick and easy. Grace Baking Powder. So convenient, easy to store, you love it. It's good enough and fresh whenever you need it. Another fine product brought to you by Grace. For recipes, go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace. Bringing good taste to life. Build your future with Belize's leading development finance institution, DFC. We finance development projects in sectors of education, housing, agriculture and agro-processing, manufacturing, tourism, small and micro-enterprise, and much more, all at affordable interest rates and flexible repayment terms. We also offer free in-house property valuations, free sound financial and technical guidance for projects, affordable building and life insurance coverage under DFC's group insurance scheme and more. So what are you waiting for? Take advantage of DFC's efficient delivery of loans and related services and get a step closer to building your future. Visit any of our nearest offices for additional information or call us at 822-2350 or 822-2360. DFC, realizing Belizean dreams, your partner in development. Aries. It's been beautiful. You know, I have to tell you this story. Rondo hit me, but we were, they sell beer in like big liter bottles. We stopped at this little outside place along the water and we're having a little sip. We got four glasses out there. Two of them have water, two of them with beer, and the rest of the liter of beer sitting on the table. I look away, all of a sudden, every glass, all the bottle, just dumped. A big noise, beer everywhere, water everywhere. <laughs> what happened? Stuff happened. <laughs> we had just sat down. It's not like we had two liters of beer before. We <laughs> I just think I sat had down. two sips. Stuff happens, Drew. 
you know, I touched the table the wrong way and... I picked the beer up, it foamed out, half of it come out anyway. These things happen. It's not what happens to you, man. I keep telling you that it's what you do afterwards. <laughs> I picked myself up, I went in the bathroom, I cleaned myself up and guess what? They gave us a new set of beer, we start again. They did. It was good. Life is good, you know. I mean, things will always happen that you don't plan for, but what do you do? Sit there and cry about them and fuss about them? Yes, you might need to do that for a little bit. Yes. But picking yourself up is important in every sense of the word, in every aspect of your life. You know, you lose a relationship today, it might hurt you, but nothing happens outside of its time. Never forget that. And things don't happen for no reason. There's always a reason for them to happen. There you go. There's always a lesson in it. Right? Yes. For those of you budgeting to come here, you need to bring U.S. dollars. Credit cards are iffy, but you're going to get a better exchange rate by bringing cash. At the banks, you're going to get like 6.4 to 1 U.S. dollar. On the street, you, you get, get it nine. on the street, you get 9. I mean, that's like a huge raise. It is, but you got to be careful where you get it on the street, though, because... Apparently, there's some counterfeit. Yeah. I mean, I don't see how it's... I don't see how the difference can be so much. I don't either. I don't know what, why they're paying a premium other than the official rate. Ready for some Keaton more says inflation's really bad, but I haven't seen it. It might be. Ready for some matters, some more matters? Sure. I am with this man for four years and he lost, he lost his couple months now. He decided that he doesn't want to spend Christmas with me because he no contribute. I guess she forget to put in the word lost job. His job. I'm with this man for four years and he's lost his job a couple months now. He decided that he doesn't want to spend Christmas with me because he not contribute to our home. I don't uh, think that it's fair to me. Well, maybe he's missing the true meaning of Christmas. Definitely. He's definitely missing the true meaning of Christmas. But you also have to understand his position. His position is he was in a place where he was able to contribute financially to the home and in his mind that might be a part of the it's definition a, of manhood. It's a bit humiliating for him probably. Yes and now he comes there and he has nothing physically to give and he feels funny. Maybe what you can do is, well I guess Christmas is gone now but maybe what you should have done or I don't know what, you're, what you did for the Christmas was to maybe invite him over for the lunch or go over and take something with him and spend some time with him. I mean Maybe he would feel more comfortable in his space as opposed to in your place. Yeah. Back up and go visit him. Go visit him. He's going through something at this time. It's not all about you. It's about him too. And this is a time for you to adjust to give back to him. Hmm. And? Let's see. Another matter. You know, I can't. What's this girl trying to do? Which girl? I am beginning to think that she's trying to show you her body. <laughs> Drew gets the best scenes here, I tell you. The best, best views. Hmm. Uh, it's a little disturbing. Boy, oh boy. I have a wife and a sweetheart. Both of them treat me good. What should I do? Raffle their name. I mean, really, dude? Mm. If you have a wife and a sweetheart and both of them treat you good, you have to decide if that is the kind of life yeah. you want. You have to decide if that is the truth that you want to tell your wife. Why don't you tell your wife? Dump so the she, sweetheart, keep the wife. Well, why don't you tell your it's wife cheaper. so that she can decide if she wants to be with a man like you or not? Dump the sweetheart, Drew says. It's cheaper. It's more fun, though. It's more fun when you have one person in your life. It's a lot less stress. It's a lot less stress. It's more fun. I mean, try it. You think that it's fun running around and lying and scheming. You will sleep so much better when you have one person in your life. You don't have to try and remember the lie you told yesterday. You don't have to hide your phone, hide your laptop, all of that kind of foolishness. You don't have no matters of your own you want to share with me? Uh, not that I can think of right now. There's some other stories I'm sure we'll come across. I don't appreciate you telling oh, my stories about, every chance. How get. about, what, it costs us like $10 to get our picture taken. That was your fault. Some vagrant on the street. Chimney. We live and we learn. You need to learn to say no. You've been around the block. You should know better than that. I have a kind heart. And it shows sometimes. I don't see it most time. Mm, you're about to see her heart, though, <laughs> if you keep looking over there. 
I'm in a relationship with my girl over nine years. And every time we quarrel, she tells my mom. And I'm always wrong. And she always right. And I get tired of her. I would get tired of that too. I feel your pain. If she has to go and tell her mother, you need to explain, or your mother, you need to explain to her that you're not in a relationship with you, her mother, and yourself. You're in a relationship with her. And as adults, I mean, if you've been in a relationship for nine years, I would imagine that you are at least in your upper 20s. Yes, you I know? would hope so. I would hope so. So there is no room in that for telling your mother all the time. Yeah. You might want to counsel your relationship, though. You might want to sit down with somebody and have a discussion when you're not arguing on how you can better communicate with each other. Because she can't always be right and you can't always be wrong and vice versa. Yeah, your mom doesn't need to be a referee. And if she's a referee, then let it be that both of you are present when you're sitting down. What? Because you might need a counselor. And she might be the counselor you need. The mother? Well, if the mother was wise, she'd tell the daughter, hey, that's for you two to work it's out. It's not the daughter. I'm not going to pick a side. It's, she's Whatever. the daughter-in-law. The daughter-in-law. So obviously he's doing something that is not so fair. So he needs... Because it's very unusual that a daughter-in-law, that the mother-in-law for the woman would say, oh, my son is wrong. Well, but if, if that's the case, you got to look at it. Maybe you are wrong. But at the same time, your mother should say, look, that's between you and him. You know, work it out. I don't need to hear it. I have a woman that drunk me and doesn't want to clean the mess I do. She even beats me. I don't know what to do. Please help me. I am desperately in need of some advice. Woman that drunk me. He put you, he inject you with, with something that makes you intoxicated because he couldn't force it down your throat. He had to inject you to drunk you without your consent. Well. Yeah, obviously the alcohol is a problem for both of you. You can't blame her for you being intoxicated. You can't blame anybody for you becoming drunk. You have to take responsibility for that action. That's true. And if you're not brave enough to take responsibility for that action, you should not be drinking. She, you are not, she is not your slave. She doesn't have to clean up after you make a mess. When you sober up, you clean up for yourself. There you go. I have responsible a, drinking. Responsible drinking is important, Drew, in more cases than one, in more ways than one. You can't go out there. I know a lot of people that go out there and drink and have a good time and then they drive home. And their laugh is, oh, you know, my car knows its way home. Your car will not know its way home one day. You know, that's the advantage the Amish have. The horse always knows its way home. And the horse don't run into another horse. <laughs> no. <laughs> Problem is they don't read stop signs. Uh, that's okay. It's only other horses coming. <laughs> and they'll figure it out. I have a boyfriend and he has two children, not with me, but I love them dearly. But his son's mother is a street girl and she comes to me and disrespects us. He said that he will stop it every day, but every day it gets worse. What should I do? Wow. What do what he call the girl? She called the girl a street girl. A she street girl. It must be like one of those, not that she lives on the street, but she's... She's a tough girl. Well, somebody needs to set him down and say, look, if she can't be around us and be respectful, keep her away. Yeah. And if she, and the only person that can keep her away is him. He has to take, do the proper things to keep her away. There you go. You know, and that's his responsibility. You need to say to him, look, babe, it needs to be done and it needs to be done as quickly as possible. And it's, if she can still have access to her children. Because that is a relationship that you don't want to stifle. But she should not be allowed to come to your house and in your space at your doorstep and disrespect you. Absolutely. When she wants to see the children, drop them off. Let him drop them off and he goes back and pick them up. Because obviously she's not mature enough to have a proper conversation with you just yet. Perfect. Morning. Morning. I live with the man for 23 years and he tells me to come out of my house because he wants to live with his previous baby mother, what should I do? <laughs> I'd laugh in his face. I'd say, no, you want to live with the other baby's mama? Then go live with her. In her house? In her house. Because now this is my house. Yeah, I don't stand your ground. Do not give up the house. 23 years? Unless he has a significant amount of cash. No, I wouldn't. I am not here to sit down and say, 
fight for things, but I say fight for your right. Your right is that you have invested time and energy and effort for 23 years with this man. Even if the house is technically in his name. I believe you're entitled to half. Yes. And if he wants to leave, he's entitled to leave. But that does not mean that your world must be disrupted. Absolutely. Right? So if he wants to go, let him go. If he wants to sell the house, he can also sell the house. But you must not be left homeless. Or penniless. Or penniless. That is fair. If he wants to go, maybe he'd say, you know what, I'll walk out and I'll take X among the things and I will leave you with the rest. And that's fine. Let him go. You can't keep him, but you have to know your rights. Do they have any free legal consultation in that regard? Family services or anything? You can go to the... F there are places you can go to know your laws or to learn your laws or to know your rights. I am not sure that... Um, I think the police department has like a division where they they can counsel you or something. I'm not sure where you can go other than I'd say call um, human services or human rights. Um, check with family court. There might be a place for you to start. And I think in the police department there's a family counseling division. In there I think they can also um, tell you what your rights are. But your rights, your basic rights are if you've been with somebody living in the same roof under the same house if none of you are legally married to somebody else, you are entitled. If you've lived with a man or a woman and that person is legally married, I mean, they're still Mrs. Jones or Mrs. White or whatever, and they've not gotten an official divorce, then you're entitled to nothing. Oh, there's no common law if he's legally married or she's legally there's married? There's no common law if wow. he or she is legally married. They have to both be single for it to be common law. Interesting. Very. So you better be careful what you invest your time in. Not because you're with a man, if the woman never divorced him, you have no rights. Keep that in mind. And same for the man. Yeah. Hmm. I live with my man for 10 years and he has three sons. And we have three sons. And, and all he does is cheat on me in my own home and wow. chase me and beats me. I love him. What should I do? I don't understand why you'd love him. I think why he, do you love a man that cheats and beats you? I think you need to work on your esteem, your self-esteem. That is lacking. And there's nothing that anybody can do to fix that other than you have to fix it. You have to start believing in you. You have to see how great you are. You have to also realize that those boys that you have are looking f at you for guidance, even if they don't say it. So you have to stand your ground. You have to start believing in your worth. And start loving and respecting you. If you don't love and respect you, nobody will. Because you don't demand it. That's true. Right? So true. So stop allowing him to beat you. Stop allowing him to take advantage of you. And, and focus on yourself and your boys. And be firm about it. And let him know you will call the police. That's right. And this mightn't be easy if you've been in this position for a long time. So you might want to seek counseling for yourself first to strengthen your self-esteem. I always say it is important for fathers to be there for their daughters because when fathers are missing in their daughters' lives, they end up in places like this. It is important for parents to instill good values in their children because when that is not done, they end up in places like this. It's important for you to believe in your children and let them know that you believe in them. Remind them how great they are. Remind them how beautiful they are. Remind them how smart and intelligent they are. As often as you can. Because it builds good character in our children. Don't tell them that they're stupid. They might do stupid things because kids do stupid things sometimes. But that doesn't make them stupid. That's right. And far too often I hear people telling their children, Boy, you're too foolish. Girl, you're too foolish. You're only ugly. You look dotty. Go tell them that kind of thing. Those things stay with them. That's true. You know, so we have to start raising better children so we can have a better society. I hate to sound like I'm preaching, but it's true. It is. You know, and I'm, I always say this. I might not have been genius in my class, but when I got home, my parents made me feel genius. <laughs> they brainwashed you. And they brainwashed me in a good way. <laughs> they helped to build my esteem that it's difficult for somebody to break it. Well, and that's what I think... I don't know how it is in Belize, but in the States, they're all worried about in class 
the children's self-esteem and, and keeping everybody equal and not giving out great prizes to one individual. They try to spread it around, not because they earned it, but just so nobody feels left out. But I've always been a proponent of it starts at the home. It's at the home where they need to get their self-esteem built, not in the classroom. Because the world is not kind. Yeah, they get out of school and out on their own, the world's going to treat them based on who the individual is, not because they were worried about your self-esteem. So you have to nurture that from young, and that can't be done without the help of your parents or some adult in your life. Indeed. This is Morning Matters. We're going to take a final break right here from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And we'll be back. With the high cost of fuel these days, every fill-up can be a curiously scary experience. Rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back. That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt, or even worse. When you think of the largest selection of sporting goods, you must think of Midway Limited. Musical instruments, Midway Limited. The largest selection of guitar strings, Midway Limited. At Midway Limited, you get high quality soccer boots, footballs, basketballs, billiards, mixing boards, guitars, violins, drums, tennis rackets, fishing poles, and a wide assortment of electronics. Midway Limited is the authorized dealers for Martin & Company, JBL Speakers, and Roland Instruments in Belize. Midway Limited, it's your one-stop shop for electrical, musical, and sporting equipment. Visit Midway Limited on Center Road in Spanish Lookout or give us a call at 823-0095. Whether it's your life you're trying to sweeten or someone else's, make it Moho Chocolate. At Moho Chocolate, we produce the finest quality chocolate. All the cocoa used by Moho Chocolate is sourced from over 120 farmers from southern Belize. We produce chocolate bars, chocolate truffles, mini chocolate squares in several flavors, and organic cocoa powder. We also have gift baskets. The next time you eat chocolate, make sure it's Moho Chocolate. Visit us at any of our three locations in Tourism Village in Belize City, in San Pedro, or in the Departure Lounge at the International Airport. When you think chocolate, think Moho Chocolate. Quick and easy baking? Try Grace Baking Powder. It comes in a convenient 10 gram packet. Grace Baking Powder. 
great for my pancakes, waffles, fry jack, flour tortillas, muffins, waffles. Wow! How quick and easy! Grace Baking Powder, so convenient, easy to store, you love it! It's good enough and fresh whenever you need it. Another fine product brought to you by Grace. For recipes, go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace, bringing good taste to life. With the high cost of fuel these days, every fill-up can be a curiously scary experience. Rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back. That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt, or even worse. When you think of the largest selection of sporting goods, you must think of Midway Limited. Musical instruments, Midway Limited. The largest selection of guitar strings, Midway Limited. At Midway Limited, you get high quality soccer boots, footballs, basketballs, billiards, mixing boards, guitars, violins, drums, tennis rackets, fishing poles, and a wide assortment of electronics. Midway Limited is the authorized dealers for Martin & Company, JBL Speakers, and Roland Instruments in Belize. Midway Limited, it's your one-stop shop for electrical, musical, and sporting equipment. Visit Midway Limited on Center Road in Spanish Lookout or give us a call at 823-0095. Looking for quick and easy baking? Try Grace Baking Powder. It comes in a convenient 10 gram packet. Grace Baking Powder. Great for my pancakes, waffles, fry jack, flour tortillas, muffins, waffles. Wow! How quick and easy! Grace Baking Powder. So convenient, easy to store, you love it! It's good enough and fresh whenever you need it. Another fine product brought to you by Grace. For recipes, go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace, bringing good taste to life. Build your future with Belize's leading development finance institution, DFC. We finance development projects in sectors of education, housing, agriculture and agro-processing, manufacturing, tourism, small and micro-enterprise, and much more, all at affordable interest rates and flexible repayment terms. We also offer free in-house property valuations, free sound financial and technical guidance for projects, affordable building and life insurance coverage under DFC's group insurance scheme and more. So what are you waiting for? Take advantage of DFC's efficient delivery of loans and related services and get a step closer to building your future. Visit any of our nearest offices for additional information or call us at 822-2350 or 822-2360. DFC, realizing Belizean dreams, your partner in development. Back to the third and final segment of Morning Matters right here in Argentina. What is this little flyer this guy gave you? He gave Rhonda. me a calenda. What does it, your Spanish is good. What does it say? It says Los Pinos. But I don't know. What does that mean? The what? I, I'll What's tell you pinos? later. I have no idea. What does it say above that? Penderia y confiteria. I'm guessing some religious thing. You know, my Spanish is not the best, but um, I have a translator in my phone and I'll figure it out later. Oh, I do too, but Good. I have to be connected to the internet. All right, this is our third and final segment right here in Argentina. Drew, you sure you don't have any matters for me yet? I'm sure. I'm sure there will be more coming though. 
This one says if I accept calls, no, you can't call. And for the next few days, you can only email. Hmm. Hmm. Morning. This is a long one. Morning. Why don't you read this one for us? No. I didn't bring my glasses. Ah. Oh. Do you need your glasses to read? You sure? Yes. That's your excuse? I need my glasses to drive. I'm really thinking we need to do this tour bus and we do the show on the bus. Let people see the whole city. I think we'll give them a treat as soon as we can. Morning. I love my husband. I fell in love with him because he's sweet, kind and generous. But now that some kindness and generosity is making us quarrel every day. Several times per day, his family members come wanting money, food and baby supplies and borrow our vehicle. These are grown adults with children who don't want to work. When I try to put a stop to it, they say that I try and obey him. Ooh. You know? You know, I've seen that happen. The kids just take advantage when they don't get what they want. They put the parents on a guilt trip. It's not good, but somebody's got to stand up and tell them to make their way on their own. I think I saw this a similar thing to this on um, Ian Levenzent Fix My Life. Um, it was kind of the same. This man and this woman, they've been married for like 30 years, and then they found, like, he just, one of his children or nieces or whatever got homeless or whatever. And before you know it, there was like 10 of them living in their house. Nobody asked the wife. Hmm. The wife just had to tolerate it. So she go about doing her own thing and the family was about to break up. <laughs> it is the man's responsibility to put a stop to his children or to his nieces or to his grandchildren yes. or whatever the case is. A temporary visit by family is okay. But they can't... Anything should, long term needs to be discussed. You can't maintain those people for the rest of your life. It will deteriorate the relationship that you and him have. You have to explain this to him in a calm, comfortable way. You have to sit him down and tell him what needs to be done in the house for the home to re be restored to the happiness that it once had. And with all this distraction, it will only create problems in your home. And like you said when you first started, you said, the reason you were attracted to your husband and you fell in love with him is because he's generous and you recognize that he's generous. But you don't want people to take advantage of his generosity. Right. Right? So you have to talk to him. You have to tell him you know that he's generous, but this has gone too far. Indeed. Interesting fact about Argentina. What? You know, in the early 1900s, there were actually more Italian-speaking people than Spanish. Ah, I didn't know that. Big migration from Italy here. I had so no we idea. need to try an Italian restaurant because it's pretty good, I hear. You've had the steak. How is it? The steak is awesome. Oh, you should see the barbecues, man. I've never seen anything like it. It's really cool. Rhonda got grossed out by it. But they, like, put the whole carcass. It's like cut in half and split open, and they have a big fire, and it's just the meat's just leaning in towards the fire. Slow-cooked. Very tasty. Hi, oh, yeah, yeah. What'd you have? Lamb. I had lamb. It was good. It was tasty. It was a good meal. Yeah. I'm in love with a man who has three children, and he said that he wants to run away with me. What am I to do? What's... I don't see an option there. Maybe he has three children and a wife, and you miss out the wife part. Because if yeah. he didn't have a wife, there would be no reason for him to need to run away. You all yeah. can exist together. Where, why does he need to run away? Yeah, what's the running away part? Does he, does he... Is he running away from his children? Why would you want to be with a man that runs away from his children? <laughs> yes. If he can run away from his children and just leave them, then he can run away from you. Because I think your children are the dearest things to you. Or they should be they the should dearest be. things to you. Good you golly. Know, nothing should be more important than your children. And if he's willing to up and leave with you, maybe he's not thinking where he should be unless he has a wife and he's just trying to abandon everybody to live this fairy tale with you but keep one thing in mind fairy tales only last for so long they always come to an yes. end yes good morning do you think boyfriends deserve a second chance how can i know yeah, that they're serious enough 
absolutely they what? They always deserve a second chance. Always. Because the first time, the girl just overreacts. Okay. Second time. That's the second chance. Do they deserve a third time? That wasn't the question. I'm asking. You need to answer the second. You know, I was talking to Karen Sands on another show, and she did agree that... Um, and she's a professional therapist, by the way. And she says everybody deserves a second chance. A second chance, you know what that means? Just one more time. Third and fourth and fifth, you're taking it make habits. Right? My personal experience in life, some things are not, you know, shouldn't be given second chance, but that's just my opinion. Um, the therapist says that everybody deserves a second chance, and that might be the right thing, and I can respect that. Some things I need to get over myself because I'm human too. But I think one time is, is acceptable in some instances. In some instances. <laughs> All right? You think everybody deserves Good. a second chance? Of course. In everything? You know, if... I mean, extreme cases, you know, if the guy just punches a girl out and beats her within an inch of her life no he doesn't get a second chance if he cheats on her if he cheats on her it was probably an accident no seriously drew come on i said earlier in the first segment that your brain was working in full good condition but obviously it's restored back to its original shape you know another interesting fact now that we're on the other side of the equator you know when water drains down a drain on the northern side of the equator the water turns clockwise when it goes down the drain. On the other side of the equator, it goes counterclockwise. No, if you ever want to test that theory, do it. It's an inter interesting factoid. Now that we've we heard, to, heard that fact. We need to be out tonight so we can see the Southern Cross. Now that we've heard that fact, will you answer my question? Yeah. If he cheats, does he deserve a second chance? Yes. If she cheats, does she deserve a second chance? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, every circumstance is different. So it just depends on what the circumstances are. Mind drop right off where cheating starts. I mean, starts. sometimes it's a learning process for both of you. <sighs> Good morning. It's true. Oh. And how can you be sure that they're cheating? I mean, that they're serious is what he says or she says. I think, I mean, again, I don't know what happened because, I mean, you say a second chance, but he says he's serious. I don't know what the issue was, well, I but said assuming it was a cheating thing, I think he has to show remorse. He has to ask for forgiveness and promise to never do it again. <laughs> and you laugh. <laughs> okay. I say everything in time. Um, that doesn't help her. It would, take a, lot, it would take a lot of work for me to know that he's serious. But I think by his action, by his openness, because trust has been broken. And that kind of trust, once it's violated, it's hard to come back. Um, so I say, <coughs> see how open and honest he is in every other way. And that might help. It might. It might. I have my boyfriend, but I feel like he'd cheat by me. With my best friend, what should I do? You feel like it. I think you got to ask yourself, why do you feel like it? Could it be that you're just insecure? And if, if that person is your best friend and you really trust him or her, then why would you think that of that person first? Because I would imagine your best friend was around before your boyfriend came around. And so you have to figure out, would, would Jane do something like that to me? Is she that kind of girl? That would be the first question I would ask myself. Would she really do that? And if, she don't, if you think that she would do something like that, why do I consider her my best friend? You have two relationships to examine at the same time. Would my boyfriend do something like that? And if he would, why, would, why am I with him? I mean, sometimes it's not about the act. It's about how you feel about certain people. And if you have so many questions about both of them, why are they in your life? Yeah. Even if they're not, and if you feel like this, why are they in your life? Or why are you thinking this about them? Yeah, you have to do some soul searching and decide whether it's you or it's their actions that are causing it. 
Yeah. And then make a decision. You either live with it or end it. Half the time it's not about, because you very rarely catch your partner cheating in the physical act of cheating. But it's about how you feel about the relationship, how you live each day, how the trust you have or you don't have. And is it worth it? A few more matters, Drew, because I know you're, you're eager to get out and living a little bit. Well, this concrete bench is getting a little tough. Hmm. He's gotten, she's gotten some friends now. Yeah, she, her yoga finally attracted some people. This one says, I have three kids and my husband left me about four months ago and he says he wants his kids. But he not visit them and he told me he went to court. What should I do? I think you got to be prepared for a court battle if that's the case. If you want to keep your kids, then depends what you think is in the kids' best interest. Good point. Don't L be selfish and think just your best interest. It's the children's best interest. Generally, I think, though... Um and don't think that just because you allow him to come back to the house to see his children that that's allowing him to see his children. He needs to be able to come, pick them up, go spend the weekend with them, bring them back away from you. Yeah, and not because you and him not having a good relationship. That doesn't mean that he and his children will not have a good relationship. So I, I think children need to be where it is happy. They need to see you in a good state and the mother in a good state. And if that is good for both of them, then that will help them to balance their life better as children. There you go. You know, but to, for the children to see you guys fighting and fussing, I'm sure that if you guys are reasonable individuals, you don't have to go to court. If you put the children first and you think about what's best for them, you don't have to go to court. Courts for people that are unreasonable. <laughs> it is. It's true. It's for people that's unfair and unreasonable. Because nobody should have to tell you what is right. That's, that's <laughs> right. It's not a matter what's right. It's what the law says. Yeah. You should know in your own little but space everybody, what's best. But everybody in their mind thinks what's right is what's in their head. Oh, he cheated. He gets nothing. Just get the dirt bag out. And, and it doesn't work that way it either. It doesn't work that way. But even if he cheated, he is entitled to his children. Or if True. you cheated, he's still entitled to his children because that is important. And even though you think he's a dirtbag, he's still entitled to the children. And if he hasn't come to look for his children in four months and he wants to take you to court for custody of his children, that is his right. But there might be a reason why he hasn't come in four months because the scars might be too open and fresh and he can't deal with it yet. It's true. It mightn't be that he doesn't want to see his children, but he doesn't know how to act at this point in his life. So think about it fairly, but prepare yourself for worst case situation. Boy, look at this girl's hair. It's beautiful. It's like fuchsia. Morning. I have a boyfriend that I have a baby with, and I know we love each other, but sometimes he gets a little bit with a bad style. But he's still trying to make it up to me. But I don't know I just feel like leave him sometimes, but I think it's not fair for our daughter to grow up without both of her parents in the same house. What should I do? I would suggest you, what, what you call it, bad style. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that refers I to. Nor do I. It could be something petty that she just doesn't like. But for the sake of that child, I'd suggest you start working towards getting married and building a home. Yes. And don't worry about bad style. Bad style. I'm not sure what you, that is, If though. he was doing something major to you, you would have written it out, and I would have known exactly what he did to you. It seemed that he has his ways, and you have your ways, and you're trying to balance that. Does he, like, leave the to toilet seat up? Maybe he has, doesn't put the cap on the toothpaste. Maybe he doesn't come home to time. Maybe he acts selfish because he's not accustomed to sharing space with somebody. Maybe he's lived by himself for a long time. I don't know what bad style is. But you can work on the bad style two things the second thing is it's always ideal for children to be in the same home with both parents but both parents need to be good examples to those children and if, a good example of a good relationship yes and if that is not present then you're better off in a different place yeah what, what was it Karen says 
that it's better for children to be from a broken home than live in a broken home. Dr. Phil says that as well. Oh, maybe she got it from him. Okay. Or Do he got it from her. I don't know what Dr. Phil says that it's, no, you know, just like you said, it's better for them to be from it than to live in it because when you're from it, you have time to heal, you got time to see good relations. When you're in it, that's all you're exposed to. Yes. You don't know what a good one is. That's right. Money matters is winding down, Joe. Okay. Tomorrow, can we go on the bus? We can definitely try to get on the bus for tomorrow. But guys, I will definitely say that we will be bringing uh, Morning Matters to you for the next uh, at least 10 days from Argentina. So we encourage you to stay tuned. You'll get to see the sights and songs or experience the sights and songs of Argentina with us. Don't miss it. Until next time, I encourage you to take care of yourselves and each other. This is Rhonda Crichton along with Drew. Saying goodbye. Bye-bye.